I'm Thomas, and I'm a sex researcher. Last week, October 11th, was National Coming Out Day. This day was founded in the United States by Robert Eichberg and Gene O'Leary in 1988, so this year marks the 30th year. Now, the intention was that by celebrating coming out, people were helping to stop homophobia by bringing an end to their silence. And then people who were homophobic would realize they knew someone that they loved was gay, and their ideas about what it meant to be a different sexuality would change. Ultimately, they would be less likely to continue being homophobic. Coming out is a huge step in every LGBTQ person's life, and it can be extremely scary and stressful, and there can be so much fear of rejection. There are so many gay people, especially young gay people, who attempt suicide out of fear of people finding out about their sexuality. And that's one of the reasons that visibility is so important. And visibility is something that I didn't have a lot of when I was a teenager coming to terms with my sexuality. So this year, for National Coming Out Day, I wanted to share my story of coming out with you. So I actually came out pretty young. I started talking about my sexuality to my friends when I was in eighth grade. I remember telling my best friend at the time, who of course was a girl, and she was like, yeah, I know, it's not a big deal. Part of being from a Midwest town is that if you march to your own drum or you're eccentric in any way, people just assume that you're gay. And with me, I guess they were right. I remember that it was shortly after I told her, probably a few months, that I actually called my mom from my dad's house because my parents were divorced and told her over the phone. She was extremely upset. I think that she always kind of knew, but she didn't really want to think about it or just thought that there was no way that it would be possible. So we talked on the phone for a little bit and she asked me if I was sure, she asked me if it was her fault, she asked me what she should have done differently for me to not be gay. And I just reassured her that she didn't do anything wrong, that it wasn't her fault, kept saying I was sorry. I kept apologizing as though I was supposed to have something to apologize for, that I was a mistake. And I think that this is how a lot of people feel. There's this idea that you're just different. And you kind of feel different and know that you're different, but people think that different is bad and therefore it feels like it's something that's bad. My dad found out about my sexuality about a year later when I was a freshman in high school, but he did not find out about it from me. Instead, he found out about it from our school officer. Apparently, someone I went to school with, or so he said, came to his office and told him that I was in a relationship and having sex with someone in their 30s. Um, I was 15 at the time and I was not having sex with someone in their 30s, but instead of coming to me and asking me about it, he just called up my dad and told him just called up my dad and outed me to my family over a rumor that wasn't even true. No one told me about it for almost two months later, which makes me question if they had actually been concerned about me in any way. Because as a parent, if my son or daughter was 15 and I heard a rumor that they were having sex with someone that was in their 30s, sexuality or not, I would wanna know if it was going on. But no one asked me about it at all. Um, one night I was sitting in my living room with my mom and she said, well, you know, your dad knows. And then she told me the story. So a few days later, I brought it up to my dad and uh, he confirmed that that was what he had heard. And I basically just said that I wasn't dating someone that was that much older than me. In fact, I wasn't dating anyone at the time, but I didn't deny my sexuality. My mom did get me a therapist so I would have someone to talk to, which was great. The effort was not to change me, but just so I would have someone to discuss all of this with. She felt like she wasn't prepared, so she had someone else step in. And neither of my parents asked me about other things that were going on in my life, like how school was going, which a gay kid in the Midwest, high school, probably not going well. The grade that I was actually in was fine. It was mostly my friends. They were people that I had grown up with from kindergarten all the way through. But it was the other grades, the older kids, that were not okay with me. There were multiple occasions where I came to my locker and had sticky notes on the front that said fag and queer. Um, one that even said, you're gonna burn in hell. And you know, sticky notes are easy to take care of. You just pull them down, rip them up, throw them away. I mean, it still sucks and you still feel it, but no one, really has to see it all the time. And then someone scratched fag into the front of my locker, probably with their keys. And the person that did that is probably also the same person that scratched fag into the back of my car, which I ran to a store right away after school and painted over it because there was no way that I thought I could go home and let my family see that on my car. 
And lunch, oh, lunch was awful. Probably every single day um, in the lunchroom, I had food thrown at me for the first few years. And it would be fun things, you know, like mashed potatoes, which is embarrassing and scary and frightening. And, you know, I would have my friends next to me being like, don't worry about it, it's not a big deal, just ignore them. But having food thrown at you, not, not cool. Um, and I actually went to my principal, talked to my principal about it, and he wouldn't do anything about it because the people that were doing it were friends of his son. So I just put up with it because I didn't think there was anything else that I could do. So I just rolled with the punches, tried to stay low, tried to stay as invisible as possible. And then eventually that grade left, the one that was directly above us, and then I was fine. My senior year was actually great and I had no problems, but getting there was rough. It was scary, I felt really alone. As you might be able to guess, I left that town as soon as I could. In fact, I packed up my little 93 Red Cavalier and drove to New York City a week after I graduated high school. I would have stayed there, I think, maybe, if I could have lived a life without fear and where I felt safe. And I just don't think that as a gay person, I could have, so I left. But I do hope that future generations don't have to think about that when they decide where they want to live. We should all be able to live in a place without fear and where we feel safe to be ourselves. And now, I do. It just happens to be in New York. And I still go back and I visit my family and I sometimes go back to the town I'm from. And it's fine. And I don't hate it. I just don't want to live there. There are multiple research studies that state that the LGBTQ population makes up about 2-4% of the overall population of the United States. That is a lot of people. And that means that there are a lot of coming out stories. And a lot of them are different. Mine was not the worst that I have heard. Probably not the best, but definitely not the worst. So if you are someone who is part of the LGBTQ community, happy National Coming Out Day. Even if you're not out yet, one day you will be. And if you are straight, well, happy National Coming Out Day to you. I would urge you to tell someone from the LGBTQ community that you love them, and also take a moment to think about how your life might be different if you were gay. Think about how the people around you might respond if you had a different sexual orientation. And then be very thankful that you don't have to go through the process of coming out. And hopefully in the future, it won't be bad for anyone at all. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. I've got a lot of content in production and I don't want you to miss out. So go ahead and click that subscribe button. And in the meantime, check out one of these other videos. And don't forget to send me your questions about sex to thomastalksabout at gmail.com.